Hi, okay, so who wants to be awesome at their jobs? Raise your hand. Okay, so those of you not raising your hand, I'm going to assume it's because you're already awesome. So let me ask you a different question. Who wants to be happy at work, right? Now everyone should be raising their hands, because why wouldn't you want to be happy? So think about the last time that you were really happy at work. What were you doing? And what I want you to do is I want you to hold that moment in your mind while we talk about the clicker isn't working. <laughs> uh, I want you to hold that moment in your mind. There we go. While we talk about what it takes to be happy. So for some people, it might just be stability and a paycheck. But while getting paid is certainly nice, I believe that you have a desire, a desire for a job that is going to challenge you and engage you and give you an opportunity for growth. So there have been a lot of studies done on happiness, and one of the more prominent ones was done by Professor Csikszentmihalyi, who also coined the term flow. And in his study, he said that the best moments are not the ones where we're sitting passive and just kind of waiting and receptive and relaxing. But the best moments are actually when we push ourselves and we put in a lot of effort to achieve something worthwhile. And this is actually a really beautiful thing, because this means that we can control and we can make ourselves happy. And, and what he talked about with flow, and I'm sure many of you have heard of this term, is it's, the, it's that moment when your work feels effortless. And then when you finish, you have this great sense of accomplishment or achievement. And so flow is most likely to occur when you have the challenge of your work maps to your skill for that task. And so achieving flow in a lot of ways is really about mastery. And the thing about flow and mastering things is that in order to stay in that state, You've got to seek out new challenges and information. It's, it's an ongoing journey. Flow isn't a destination that you arrive at, but it's a process. And so then the question becomes, how do we flow? And this is where magic and abstraction come into our story. You see, mastery is achieved through understanding. And understanding means that we aren't going to accept the magic and our tools and our technology, and we're going to dive down into the abstractions that are supporting our work. And so what do I mean by this illusions and abstractions? Well, if you think about it, programming in and of itself is an act of creating an abstraction. You're building a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. And so if you think about a more concrete example, if you have a bunch of logic gates, and you put them together, you can build a circuit. And if you put a bunch of circuits together and some other stuff, you can build a computer. And then if you take a bunch of zeros and ones, you can use a programming language and then build a file system and then build an application and eventually a website that shows pictures of funny cats. And at each level, there is an abstraction. And these abstractions kind of transcend all the parts that put them together. But the thing is, if you want to be a master, you can't just accept, <laughs> you can't accept abstractions. You, in fact, I actually believe you can't do anything magical of your own unless you really understand the illusions supporting your tools. So I'm going to tell you a little story uh, to kind of illustrate this point. So in the late 1600s, there was a promising young alchemist named Johann Becker. And he worked tirelessly to help determine the formula that would turn metal into gold. And he had felt like he was so close in his progress, and he was so blinded by his ambition that he decided to do a little like, demo for his friends, an almost illusion magic trick, if you will, where he actually performed this transformation. And while his demo went off without a hitch, what he didn't account for was that the king would catch wind of this experiment, and before long, he was uh, imprisoned, forced to reproduce his results. So after years of trying without success, because it involved a little bit of nuclear power, which he didn't have, he was about to be put to death 
But the king gave him one more chance, because you see, at this time, porcelain was valued equal to gold or silver, but no one had quite figured out the mystery of how to manufacture it yet. And so he focused on really understanding the abstraction, which is like the material, the methods, the equipment, everything that you would need to create porcelain. porcelain. And it was through this careful experimentation that this alchemist turned industrial chemist was able to produce the first European porcelain. And it is through understanding and mastery that he was able to create real magic. And this theme of deep understanding and mastery carries through time to our profession, too. Important achievements like the Speedy Protocol wouldn't have been possible without really understanding low-level networking and browser internals. Similarly, the Cincha team created their own version of the Facebook iOS app, which they dubbed Fastbook, to show that if you took the time to understand what was going on under the hood, you could build a great app in HTML5. And in my own personal experience, we launched a Rails app that buckled under the weight of our users because we didn't fully understand everything Active Record was doing under the covers. And it was only through careful analysis that this seemingly innocuous query generated this view, and then all of these other views, that we were able to understand what we needed to do to scale our system to meet our customer demands. But this is the thing. As you get more and more magic and abstraction in your tools, it becomes even more important to look inside of that black box and understand what is happening. At a minimum, you need to understand where your abstraction falls apart. I consider this having a car mechanic level of ability for all the tools that you use. This means that you've taken the time to understand how to deploy and install all of the software, that you know the performance and reliability characteristics of your stack, and that you know who to call and where to look when things don't work the way you think they should. But getting back to our original point, which is about being happy, and that's what you guys all care about. So being happy requires finding flow. All of this flows from mastery. And so if you want to be successful in an area of your life, it really comes down to mastering the laws of cause and effect. So if you know someone who is an amazing developer, then chances are that they've mastered the cause, which is the effort required, to achieve the effect, which is their desired result or outcome. Because success isn't chance. Success is mastery. And if you want to be successful, which I think you all do, I'm positing that, the drive and desire to become a master is going to be critical to that journey. And in technology, mastery can only be achieved through understanding. But this understanding implies that you're going to stop accepting magic, and you're going to push through those plateaus and dips in your learning curve. But this means that you're going to look at every new task that comes to you with, what is the most that I can do here? Or how can I blow people away with this project? And it's when you do this that this process is not just a destination, but it's in a whole journey and an exciting one. And so now there's, there's simply no way to ever be perfect at what you do. But there are these perfect moments, the brilliant slivers of time where everything just comes together and falls into place. And it's these moments that make everything worthwhile. And this is good because at the end of the day, mastery requires sacrifice. This path is not like a common one or an average attempt that you can do in your regular working hours or in your spare time. It means that if you truly want to be a master, that you're actively going to choose to spend your time there and forego other pursuits. Because we are defined by what we make time to do, not by what we do when we have time. And so I'm going to leave you with um, one final thought which is that in the end, this pursuit can lead to success in a job you love. But most of all, I want you to have a good reason to stop accepting magic and go and create magic of your own. Thank you.